Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call this message uh, Love and Attraction, Sowing and Believing. Today is the February the... What's the day today? Fifth? Sixth. Sixth. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, sixth of February. And I'm going to start to read from John 3, 16. Praise God. Everybody got it? Yeah. yeah. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <clears throat> so you see here, God first loved us so much. He loved us with all His heart. God doesn't love us partially. He loves us with all His heart. That He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what we saw earlier, isn't it? That whoever believes in Jesus shall have everlasting life. And we see uh, from John chapter 10, again, John chapter 10, verse 26 to 28. And here he's saying to some Jews, he's saying, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. You see, it's the same, same thing. Those who believe, God will give eternal life. Hallelujah. And that is the miracle of the gospel, that God will give us eternal life. So He gave His only begotten Son, so that we can receive eternal life. That is what I talked about last time, that God gave His Son so that we can receive eternal life. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And the only begotten Son, He came into this world and He destroyed the works of the devil. And after that, He went back to heaven, He became a life-giving spirit. God had to do that. He had to destroy the works of the devil first before he could become a life-giving spirit. <clears throat> God could not become a life-giving spirit unless he first destroyed the works of the devil. Because for this, if Jesus didn't destroy the works of the devil, then Jesus could not live within us. First of all, he couldn't, if Jesus didn't destroy sin, if Jesus didn't destroy The, the power of sin that the devil had, because the devil had power over man because of sin. You see, God could not have fellowship with man because of sin. The devil had power because of sin. And, and because Jesus died on the cross, he, uh, he could give us forgiveness. He could give us righteousness. And that is a miracle. That truly is a miracle. And without that, God couldn't give us righteousness. He could not, first of all, He could not live within us. He could not, the power of God could not penetrate our life, our heart. We could never be born again if Jesus hadn't come to be sacrificed for our sin. So that's a true miracle. And the Holy Spirit could not be a life-giving spirit if, we, if He hadn't killed the old man. You haven't crucify the old man the Holy Spirit could not be a life-giving spirit of course now the Holy Spirit is giving us eternal life the Holy Spirit is attracted to the love of God in our heart that we love him with all our heart the Holy Spirit or God the Holy Spirit is God it is Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit is the Word of God because the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ it's the life-giving Spirit, but the life-giving Spirit is also the Word of God. And you see, as we talked about earlier, the Word of God, 
I believe the Word of God that's keeping all things together in the universe is the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God keeping everything together. But no, the Word of God can move inside of us who were lost because of sin. No, the Holy Spirit is attracted by our love for Him. And, and it's coming into our life and we are born of God. New life is born. Hallelujah. That is wonderful. And because it's very important that we understand the <clears throat> how things work together. Because the Holy Spirit is a life-giving Spirit. He can now give life to our mortal bodies. Why can He give life to our mortal bodies? Because Jesus, first of all, destroyed the old man that is weak to sin so he can give power over sin over the weakness to sin like we sometimes feel we are weak we're slaves to sin but the holy spirit can give us power over sin because he crucified the old man and no he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world He's greater. He's greater than sin. He's greater than the old man. He's greater than the devil. If Jesus hadn't destroyed the works of the devil, we could never say, He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Because there would be no God within us. <laughs> so Jesus... The Holy Spirit can destroy sin, can destroy the power of sin, can destroy the power of habits, can destroy the power of any kind of sin, anything coming from the sin nature. He can not only give us forgiveness, but He can destroy it. He can give us power and authority over it if we believe in Jesus. You see, we, we can't pray to God, Oh God, I, I pray that you give me more, more strength to overcome the devil. No, God does not give us more strength. He does not give us more patience. He does not give us more love. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has the power. He has given us victory. He has given us full victory. He gave us full victory by destroying the, the, the body of sin on the cross and by overcoming death when he rose from the dead he destroyed everything and he rose from the dead and the spirit that he now became is the spirit that overcame everything the spirit that rose from the dead or Jesus that rose from the dead who became a life giving spirit and he sent the spirit back to the earth that spirit it's the spirit that overcome, that overcame death, that overcame the devil, that overcame the old man, that overcame everything, that overcame the law of Moses, that overcame sin and sickness and death and everything. That is the spirit of God that we receive. That is the life-giving spirit. <clears throat> and now he can give us life. He can give life where there was death. He can give life where there was death. And he also took upon himself our sicknesses and diseases. And he destroyed it on the cross. He destroyed. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And guess what? Sickness and disease are the works of the devil. Sin is the work of the devil. Weakness to sin is the work of the devil. It's the result, we can say it in a different way, it's the result of the fall of Adam. Everything that is the result of the fall of Adam is the work of the devil. And there is more things that are the work of the devil and it is the curse that came upon this world. It is the work of the devil. And Jesus destroyed the curse by becoming a curse when he hung on a cross. 
he became that because it's written that curse is everyone that hangs on a tree and Jesus became a curse for us so that we can receive the blessing of Abraham you see he became a curse he destroyed the curse so that we can be, we can receive and experience the blessing of Abraham that is so wonderful so when we understand the symbolism of this and uh, how it works together we will understand with full assurance why we can believe in the blessing of Abraham and it's not only the blessing of Abraham that we have received but it's written in the Bible that we have been blessed with all the blessings of the heavens all the blessings of the heavens and he's even explaining it more it's written that Jesus he became the firstborn of the dead and <clears throat> the firstborn and we are born of God and Jesus died on the cross God died on the cross in Jesus so that we can inherit God you see what we talked about last time about this marriage when uh, the woman uh, enter into the kingdom of the king she inherits everything the king has all that the king has become hers the same way when we enter into the kingdom of God we inherit God yes. we inherit God and this we can inherit because Jesus has destroyed the curse Amen. it's destroyed the curse so that we can inherit the blessing of Abraham and so we can not only inherit the blessing of Abraham, but we can inherit God. We can inherit His kingdom. Jesus even says, all that I have is yours. He said, all that I have is yours. I don't remember where it is written, but I believe Jesus said it. That all that I have is yours. All that He... He's, he, he, he. And, he and, and what does Jesus have? He, is, he has been given all power all power all power in heaven and on the earth do you know before Jesus died on the cross Jesus did not have all power in heaven and on the earth and in God I believe did not even have all power in heaven and on the earth well I, I believe God had all power but he chose not to use it he could not use all his power because the devil had a right to have power over man because of sin. The devil had, the devil had been given power over the world. He had been given um, power over the world and, and man. And God would not just overturn that. But God had a plan how to overturn it. God did not just come and wipe the devil off the face of the earth. No. He was dealing righteous, righteously, even with the devil. So he had that. That's why he had to become a man. I don't know all understand all of it, but but God had to become a man. Under, kind of, not under the power, but he had to become a man because the devil had been, and he had to die as a man. He had to die as a, uh, with the body of sin. He had to overcome everything. He had to be tested by the devil. He had to do all this to fulfill all righteousness, to do to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill all righteousness of the law of Moses, but to outsmart the devil and to do everything in a way where the devil could never again accuse him of anything. He cannot accuse Jesus because the Jesus has have overcome him. He has satisfied the heart of God. This, he has satisfied God's desire for holiness and righteousness. And he's dissatisfied him in, 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 in proving himself all powerful. Praise the name of Jesus. He has satisfied everything. And no, truly, the devil has been destroyed and all his works. And therefore, we can believe, we can believe with understanding in the blessings of God. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have inherited God, we have inherited the kingdom, we are in Christ. We are planted even in the body of Christ. 
When we become born of God, we become one body with Jesus. And then we're in Jesus. And guess what? Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is in heaven. He's sitting on the throne of God with all power and authority. That, and it's written in the Bible that we have been seated with Him. We have been seated with Him above every power and dominion and, and all that. We need to understand that. Hallelujah. But now, the Spirit of God is attracted to love. God wants us to love Him with all our heart. Love Him. Love God. And to love God is to love His Word. Is to be committed. Is to be faithful to His Word. To the truth. To love God is not only to be committed to the written Word of God, but is to be committed to the truth of the Word of God truth and it's written the fullness of the word of God is truth sometimes you cannot just pick one scripture and that is the truth you see the fullness of the word of God is truth you can't just read go and hang yourself it's probably written somewhere in the Bible go and hang yourself yeah I don't know if that's written but you can't pick a scripture and that is the truth for you no it's not the fullness of the word of God is truth it's not uh, correct either that you should pull out your eyes and if you are attempted to sin, you should pull out your eyes and cut off your tongue or cut off your hand. No, then you don't understand the fullness of the word. You can't pick scriptures like that because the fullness of the word is truth. Therefore, we need to understand the truth. And it's written that uh, in John 4, 23 to 24, yeah, it's not written, go and hang yourself, but it's written, and he went and hanged himself, like Jude. He went, and he went and hanged himself. You wonder, what am I going to do? And he went and hanged himself. You can't take that scripture as truth for you, you see. So, so that, we, many do that, they pick a, 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 a scripture, uh, and, and that's going to speak to them for what they're going to do today. <laughs> but that's not how it works. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. John 4, 23-24 But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Amen. You see, we don't worship as many people do with a chain of, what do you call it, what Catholics are using and the Muslims are using, use a chain with the, uh, the rosary. Mm. We don't use a rosary and we're counting. Yeah, and we're counting our prayers and praying. We're just using a lot of words, but we don't have, we're not being led by the spirit. You see, God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So God wants us to be led by the spirit. But the spirit of God will always be in agreement with the truth. Right? We must be very careful with this. This is what, as we said earlier, our commitment, our love for, for God is to the Word of God, is to Jesus. It's to love Him with all our heart, love God with all our heart. But God is Spirit. But He's not just any Spirit. He's a Spirit that is, He's the Spirit of Truth. He's a Spirit, His Spirit is always in agreement with the truth. So we need to differ, know the Word of God. If you, and it's written, and you shall know the truth, and the truth, truth shall set you free. If you don't know the truth, if you don't know the Word of God, if you don't know the truth, we can easily be deceived by other spirits. 
you can feel a spirit leading you to do something that is not in agreement with the word of God or with the truth. Because there are many spirits. And spirits want to deceive us. Therefore, we need to try to know the word of God. And we need to be committed to the word of God. We need to be committed to God. To the truth and to the word and to the spirit. But we can't just see, well, and then you start to receive dreams and spiritual things. But none of it is in agreement with the Word of God. Then you must deny those things. You see, just like when you're married, you, you may have some feelings, some spiritual feeling in your side. You feel some spiritual love for somebody else than your wife. Then you deny those feelings and you remain committed to your wife. The same way with us. When we... If we, if we get some spiritual feelings that is not in agreement with the Word of God, we deny those feelings and we remain committed to the Word of God. This is very important because so many people are deceived by spirits and by teachings and by all kinds of things, by pastors, by pastors, by churches, by doctrines. And maybe you get a spiritual feeling. How do we know? That is the Spirit of God. How can we be sure it's the Spirit of God speaking to us? In a dream or, or we get a revelation or we get a feeling. How do we know it's the Spirit of God? Well, first of all, we can know it by peace, by love, Amen. by faith. God's Spirit is faith. His Spirit is the Spirit of faith, right? It's full assurance. You get faith. You don't get pressure. Somebody's trying to press you to give money. And you need to do it right now. Bow your head 30 seconds and you need to give 10,000 kroner. That's not the Spirit of God. You feel pressure. God gives you full assurance. That is the Spirit. And then maybe you get some, uh, something, you feel you should do something and you, it's accompanied by fear. That's not the Spirit of God. God's Spirit is not, He's not given us the Spirit of fear but the spirit of power, love, mm. and self-control. Mm. So the Spirit of God will come with, with, uh, with love, with faith, with joy. That is a sure sign. But that's not enough. The devil is trying to, at the lake, he's trying to copy God. So he may try to copy the peace of God. He may try to copy the joy and copy the light. Therefore, we need to know the Word and the truth. Because he's very deceptive, the devil. The more we know, know the truth, the more we can, uh, uh, can uh, display the devil's tactics. So, for example, how do I know... Uh, if I get a spiritual feeling, I feel strongly, I get full assurance that I should kill somebody. How do I know that's not the Word of God? That that's not the spirit of God. You feel some people do that. They feel it. That some a voice is telling them that they have to kill somebody. How do you how do you know that is not the spirit of God? Anyone? How do you know? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> what if an angel come in front of you? You see an angel. He's telling you, you should kill your neighbor. An angel. And it's coming with full of light. And you feel, wow, yeah, maybe I need to do that. Now you know it's not the Word of God. It's not, cannot be God. Because it's not in agreement with the Word of God. With the truth. So you, you, you tell the devil to go in the name of Jesus. Right? You deny those feelings. Yeah, if you feel like, you, you feel like a spiritual feeling like you're going to burn down your house or your neighbor. Could that be the Spirit of God? No, it could not. Because God is not burning down the house of your neighbor. God is love. God doesn't do that. It's not in agreement with the truth. It's not in agreement with the word of God. So those things are very clear. <coughs> but then he can come closer to the truth. So the better we know the truth, the better we can know the devil's tactics and resist them. So, but God is spirit. He, he doesn't want us to reject the spirit. Some people reject the spirit. In some, uh, some circles, they reject speaking in tongues, they reject revelation. If you feel like, if, if I should go to some kind of meeting somewhere, 
a priest is preaching or, or, or something. And I feel, I have a revelation from God. I mean, can I share it? No, they don't believe in revelation. They will not allow revelations. They will not allow praying for the sick. They will not allow you to cast the demons in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's also wrong because it's written here. God is a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. We cannot reject the spirit and go to the, the dry word of God only. Only the word of God. We don't want any spiritual thing, any joy, any joy of the spirit. We don't want that. No, we want that. We want that because it's spiritual. It's from the spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. This is not human joy. It's the joy of the Holy Spirit. Peace, love, faith. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. Revelation, prophecy, even speaking in tongues. It's from the spiritual revelations coming from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We should invite those things. But we should test it with the Word of God with the truth. We should always test it. We should not become so spiritual that we do not test things. Because if we, 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 if we don't love, if we are not committed to the Word of God, we will be deceived. Some people are committed to the Spirit, but not to the Word of God. And they will go wrong. And they will have a rut of spiritual revelations, but they will easily be revelations from the wrong place from the wrong spirits and the only purpose of the devil is to kill destroy and steal from our life he want to destroy us but Jesus he came to give us life in abundance that's the purpose of of being committed to the spirit and to be committed to the truth it's for the purpose of life in abundance. God want to give us life in <coughs> abundance. Therefore, love not the world. 1 John 2.15. Hallelujah. There's written. 2.15. Uh, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. We must be committed to God, to the Spirit of God, to the Word of God, to the truth. We cannot, you see, God, He will not share our love with nothing else. Just like I will not share my wife's love for me with nobody else. I will not allow that. I will not allow her to love another man. That doesn't mean that she maybe sometimes can have feelings going here and there. Uh, that we don't know, but her commitment and faithfulness. I will not allow her to be with another man. And God will not allow us to be with another spirit or to be with the world. He will not allow it. He's a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Just like we can be jealous. God is a jealous God. He will not allow us to love something else. Therefore, we must not love the world. We must not even love a pastor. You, you, listen to me. We cannot love a church or an organization. We cannot be committed to that. For example, I'll give you an example. God tells you to do something. And you say, yes, God, I love you. No, I love you. Uh, and you hear, but God, uh, 
I, I'm just going to check with my pastor if I can do that. God is leading you to do something. He's showing you something. And you go to your pastor and you tell him what God is showing you. And the pastor says, well, no, I can't allow that. That will not fit with the program of our church. And then you go back to God and you say, well, God, you know I love you. God, you know I love you. But you know, God, I also love my pastor. And my pastor says, I cannot do this. God, you know my lo I love you. I, you know I love you. But sorry, God, I can't do this because my pastor will not allow it. What do you think God will say? You see, we cannot love men. We love God. We're here as members of the body to help each other to follow Jesus mm -hmm. and to fellowship with others. But we must love God. Yes. Pastors are not our bosses. They're not our leaders. They're not, they are not. don't own us. Mm -hmm. Pastors and teachers and prophets, they are only ministers to help us follow Jesus. Yes. They don't control us. Mm -hmm. We are under the control of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. We must let it remain there. Because it's often many places that, that this organization will try to control us. You must give your tithing, for example, to this organization or there. What if God tells you to do something different? We need to follow Jesus. Jesus, the Spirit of God, what, is, what we have assurance of in our, our hearts. We need to be fully committed and faithful to Jesus Christ. That is the purpose. Because I, I believe there's a danger in this world today. And that is, it's a danger among Christians. And that is the love of the world. And today, many places, it's almost demanded that you need to give yourself to a worldly organization. You need to give yourself to a word. You need to be committed. You need to give your commitment. You need to become a member. You need to give your commitment to worldly organizations. You need to promise your, your, your faithfulness. Almost to the degree where you have to share your love with the world, with an organization, the love of God. You say, well, God, I, I know you said it, but my organization, we say, oh God, I know your word says this, but Lord, you know, the doctrine of my church will not allow that. So you go compromise with the word of God because the doctrine of the church you belong to says something different. That's dangerous. I'm saying it's dangerous because God is a jealous God. He will not share our love in nothing else. Not the pastor, not the not church, the world, not our lustful flesh, not sin, not the devil, nothing. Yes. He will not allow it. He demands 100% love for commitment to Him. Yes. That's a rule. God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Just like we are jealous of our own husbands and wives. We will not allow our husbands or wives to share, to allow that our husband or wives share the love with another man or a woman. We will not allow that. Because we're jealous. Hallelujah. Therefore, love not the world. Love not the world. Come back to Jesus. When I've been traveling around many places, I preach this gospel. And God is a jealous God. And when I ask people to, if they're not sure if they <coughs> have committed their life to Jesus, almost everybody stretch up their hand and, and want to be saved. They have not heard this before. I don't know. But I've been in church in, in Pakistan. The first time I really preached this, it was in a tent meeting in Pakistan. There was 500 people around there in this meeting. And I preached and I asked who was not sure if they had committed, not sure if they had committed their life to Jesus. Everybody stretched up their hands, as far as I could see. It looked like everybody was stretching up their hands. And I was wondering if the preacher had misinterpreted me. 
<coughs> but everybody, they understood the message and they wanted to be committed to Jesus. I did this in a, in a, in a congregation, in another congregation in Pakistan. It's a big denomination in Pakistan. And I was preaching uh, somewhere, I'm not going to say any names or nothing, nothing. But I was preaching and everybody stretched out their hand. It looked like everybody stretched out, I want to be saved. I preached in another place in Pakistan and it was a beautiful building, many people inside, and I was asking who wanted to commit a life to Jesus. It looked like everybody was stretching out their hand. And after the meeting, the pastor came to me and said, well, you know what? Today, 80% of my church was saved. 80%. I preached in Africa, in Uganda, <clears throat> and I preached this message, similar. And I, it was on a market <clears throat> outside. <clears throat> Many people. And I preached this message, and I asked, who wants to receive eternal life? Everybody stretched up their hand. And want to be saved. Everybody. I say everybody. And when I invited people to come forward for salvation. Everybody came forward and want to be prayed. And we had to pray for everybody. It was so powerful. And I had to look at my interpreter then. And say. Hey. Did you misinterpret me? He said no. I preached. I, 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 I said exactly what you said. People want to hear this. People want to hear about how to believe in Jesus. Because many times it's been preached wrong and people haven't understood and their, their commitment haven't often been correct. You know what? God is attracted. God is attracted to love. God is a jealous God. But guess what? What is the devil attracted to? He's attracted to the love of the world. He's attracted to the love of sin. He's attracted to the love of the lust of the flesh. When you look at like a pornographic, if somebody looks at a pornographic film, what is attracted to that? You are the sinful lust in your body or sinful man. The devil is attracted to sinful things. Like pubs with strip bars and stuff. Who is attracted to that? The lust of the flesh. Evil people. The devil is attracted to that. The devil is attracted to naked flesh. The de devil is attracted even to us when we are full of flesh. But we are protected in Jesus if we are committed to his life, to, his, his, to him. We get some protection. Hallelujah. Amen. Sin and death are bound together. But love of God and God and eternal life are bound together. The more we sow to the flesh, the more the devil will be attracted to us. The more we sow to the spirit, the more life is attracted to us. You see, we reap what we sow often. If we sow in the flesh, we shall reap it corruption from the flesh. If we sow in the spirit. To sow, I'm just going to say shortly. To sow in the spirit. To sow the spirit, the, what you get from the spirit, what you, your conviction, your love for God, to sow in the spirit, we shall reap life, eternal life. You see, even to come with some bolla and cake for the meeting, you, you felt love in your heart. You felt to share something. You shall reap. When we sow in the spirit, we sow our love. We have love in our heart. We sow the love of God. We shall reap eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. It's sowing things. 
That is believing. It's actually, it's believing. Because when we believe, we follow Jesus. We hear His voice and we follow Him. We, we respond to the Spirit. We respond to love. We respond to faith. We respond to the truth. When we do that, we shall reap eternal life. But when we sow to the flesh, we sow anger, we sow irritation, we sow sexual habits, we sow this and that, uh, then we should reap corruption. Then there, there, there can be an opening for the devil to destroy. Therefore, we should try to deny the flesh, not give into it, and we should sow to the Spirit. We should learn more about the Spirit. We should deny ourselves and follow Jesus. The more we can deny ourselves, and the more we follow in the Spirit, the more we shall reap and the more we shall hinder the devil to have a door into our life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus has set us free. God has given us His Spirit. And the promise of God is when we receive His Spirit, we shall be able to start to drink from the Spirit. We shall be able to start to respond to the Spirit. It can start with it in a small way, with easy things. To We can feel like love to help our neighbor to come to some bolla uh, for the meeting to do small things but that is to start to sowing in the spirit hallelujah sometimes also when i've given money i feel convicted in my heart to give money i feel the spirit is leading me and i give something and i feel like sometimes i feel like when i've given it's like it's such a joy it's like wow i feel like it almost it's exploding as i give it away it explodes. I know, not that I'm going to receive a lot of money back, you know, but when we sow in the Spirit, whatever we sow, we shall reap. We shall reap. And praise the name of Jesus. Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. He has set us free from the power of sin and death so that we now can sow in the Spirit. We can drink living water. We can, when I say drink living water, I'm, I, I mean to, to respond to the Spirit. We can respond to the Spirit. We can start to walk with Jesus. We can start to follow Him. We can follow the conviction of our heart. We can try. God sees our heart. We can try. It doesn't mean to, to say that we are perfect. But we try to deny the flesh. We try. We may not be very successful for a while, but we try and we try to believe in Jesus, we try, we follow Him with all our heart and we shall start to reap. Hallelujah. Sowing is believing. Sowing is believing. And when we believe, we reap eternal life. I must read John, to, to end this, I will read John chapter 4. John chapter 4. With a woman at the well. From verse 10. This is the Gospel of John. I don't know if you have First John, how we are like. Can you check if it's John? John chapter 4. <clears throat> Jesus was at a well. I can wait to hear for instance. John chapter 10. Now we can start from yeah we can start from verse seven. Jesus was at a well, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then a woman of Samaria said to him, "How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman?" 
for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and this gift has truly come in Jesus Christ. And he says, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink. And who it is? You see two things here. The gift of God and who it is. You see, here we have the gift of God, a real gift. And the, and the one that's talking to her is, is God in, in man. It's Jesus, the Messiah. And who it is who says to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. That's symbolizing the Spirit of God. He would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? <clears throat> Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, <clears throat> Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever, listen, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Amen. Will never thirst. Whoever, <clears throat> listen, whoever drinks the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Never. Never thirst. How many times have many people not been hungry for the Spirit of God, hungry for the glory of God, hungry for faith? Give me more faith. Give me this. Give me that. But here's written, whoever drinks living water shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water. So he shall not only never thirst, but the water that God shall give him shall become a fountain of water it shall become. Amen. It shall become a fountain. So we shall not only not thirst again, but it sh we shall be overflowing. Amen. And that's what Jesus said. I have come that you shall have life more abundantly. More abundantly. He shall have life and it shall flow over. Yes. It shall flow over. Yes. The springing up into everlasting life. The water that flows up from within. It is not only just a feeling, mm. but it flows up unto eternal life. Mm. It is flowing up to give us something, to do something, to produce something. Wow. And it's producing what? <clears throat> it is producing <clears throat> the blessing of Abraham in our life. Yes. It is producing life where there was death it is producing provision where there was poverty. It is producing healing where there was sickness. It is producing life where there was death. It is producing the power of God, the blessing of God, the blessings of the heavens. It is producing things in your family. It is producing life in your family. It is producing life in your business. It's just producing things in your life and in your environments. That is the purpose of the power of God. That is the purpose of the Spirit of God. He is not just a feeling. He is the power of God. <coughs> and He is producing eternal life. You see, eternal life is the life of God. Eternal life is the existence of God, is the presence of God, is the life of God. That is what He is producing. And why can He produce that? Yes, because Jesus has become a life-giving Spirit. Jesus has become a life-giving Spirit. That's why this water or this Spirit can produce eternal life. Produce life where there was death. Produce freedom of sin and power and discipline where you were bound to the power of sin. The Holy Spirit can produce the character of God in your life. The nature of God through knowledge. 
of him. You see, we shall put on the nature of God through knowledge of God. Through knowledge and by the Spirit, by the Spirit we shall mortify the deeds of the body. But we don't only mortify the deeds of the body, but we putting on the nature of God or the character of Christ. Patience, love, joy. All those characters of the love of God and the Spirit of God. We put it on by the Spirit, by the power of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Through understanding of all this, we shall with full assurance be able to enter into the glory of the kingdom of heaven. We shall put on Jesus. And we shall put on the power of God. And we shall put on authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Sowing, we shall reap. Sowing, we shall reap. We sow the Spirit. We speak the Word of God. We commit it to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We drink living water. In many ways, it's saying this. We sow, we drink, we speak, we act, we follow. We believe. All of this is kind of speaking about the same thing. We believe. To believe is more than having faith. To believe is to act upon your faith. To believe is to hear His voice and follow Him. And when we follow Him, we are sowing. We are sowing. We are acting. We are doing. We are speaking. We are walking. We are sowing. And when we act upon the Word of God, it produces life. You see, faith in itself is dead. Faith without action is dead. But when we act upon faith, faith comes alive and it produces life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for love. We thank you for being the way and showing us the way. So that we can understand your way and you, your word and your work and the truth and how to walk. Lord Jesus, we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Exalt your holy name. Thank you for giving us, Father, thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. Thank you for destroying the works of the devil. Thank you for giving us healing. Thank you for giving us deliverance. Thank you for giving us freedom from sin. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.